Wow. Okay. Then still in the title, what we have next is a phrase that's in apposition to the Bhagavati or the Chomden Dema. So if we were translating in English, we'd say we have Bhagavati and then a comma, and then set off this next part um, with a with a comma at the end as well. So moving on to this line, we have Sha Trengushe Sa She Ra Ba Rab She Rab. She Rab is the word that is translated into English as wisdom. It's a translation of the Sanskrit word prajna. She means to know or knowingness and rab is excellent, the highest, superior. So she rab is the su most superior kind of knowing. So we can translate that as wisdom. Some people will back translate it into Sanskrit as prajna. Then the key here, kayata kyagigu ki, is the first of our syntactic particles. All the particles can be divided into two kinds, lexical particles, which make up words, go to make up words, and syntactic particles, which arrange those words into meaningful units in the sentence. The syntactic particles tell us how the words function in the sentence. Ki is a genitive particle. The Tibetans call it a drell draw. Drell means connection and draws term. So it's a connection term or a connecting particle. Um, and in the study of classical languages in the West, that in English we call it a genitive particle. Genitive with the same root as the English word generations. In generations, people are linked together. The genitive particle links words together. It can link words, phrases, or entire sentences, actually. So the genitive particle is linking the concept of wisdom to that which follows. So what we have here in the agigubi is another genitive particle. So this entire section here is all being linked by this genitive particle to the word wisdom or shera. So this section is pa, ra, naro, ro, la, ro, ta, shabgu, tu, pa, yata, cha, gigu, chi, na, chin, pa, a, gigu, i, pe. Just by itself, this would be pronounced pa, first letter in the fourth row of the syllabary. However, with the addition of the agigui, which is another genitive particle, the pronunciation changes to pe. So this word, pa ro tu, pa ro tu chen pa, is the word that's translated into English as perfection. The genitive particle gets translated by of, and then reading backwards, we have the perfection of wisdom. Pa means the over there, beyond. Ro means side or bank or shore. So the pa ro is a far shore. Tasha q tu is a type of particle that we'll discuss more later called the la dun particle. It just means it's equivalent to the particle la, and here it's going to just mean tu. So tu in Tibetan means tu in English. Chinpa is the past tense of the verb to go, so it just means gone here. So we have gone to the far shore. That's a concept that means going all the way. Uh, achieving the goal, uh, arriving at the other side. In English, that was first translated by Edward Kanzi. The great Prajnaparamita scholar as perfection. And so we have the perfection of wisdom. 
Then we have here another genitive linking particle. The genitives are always going to link something together. As wisdom or prajna was linked here to perfection um, by this genitive, so too is this whole thing going to be linked to the concept here by this genitive particle. This genitive particle, agigu e, um, links the perfection of wisdom to this two-syllable word, sa, nya, cha, nya, gigu, ni, na, ning, pa, naro, po, ning, po, heart, or essence. So when we speak of the Heart Sutra, this is the word here, Ningpo, that gives us the word heart. We're not, ta we're not talking about compassion here with this word, um, but rather essence or pith. So the essence of the perfection of wisdom, the Bhagavati. That is the title in, in Tibetan. And then what we have on the third line here is part of the title, but it's a convention that goes with titles of books in Tibetan that very often is not translated at all into English. Ja Drengu Je Sa Je Bayata Ja Wa Je Jawa. Je Jawa is an expression that means that which is called. In Tibetan books, they use this after the title of books. We will see this J particle and its two um, equivalents. Cha, Trengu Che, Sa, Che, and Sha, Trengu Che, Sa, Che, all three of these being equivalent. After quote quotations, for instance, in Tibetan. Um, so J Jawa means that which is called so that which is called the Bhagavati, the heart, or the essence of the perfection of wisdom. And then we have ba o ja sha pyu shu ga sa juk sa naro so juk so Juk is an honorific word that means to live or to dwell. So what the Tibetan is saying, rather, unlike anything we would have in English, is the Bhagavati, the heart of the perfection of wisdom, that which is called that, Zhuk, lives here within the pages of this book. Sanaro So is a terminating particle, a sentence ending particle. These terminating particles are a reflection of whatever the suffix of the preceding word is. So you could say they the, the final suffix, here the second suffix, sa, is repeated, a naro is placed on top, and that makes the equivalent of an English period. At the end of a title, as with a chapter, for instance, or a section in a book, it's common to have two shades. So the, the combination of the so terminating particle with the double shade indicates that that's the end of our title as it would appear on the front page of a Tibetan book and on the cover of the book. So we have Chong Dan De Ma She Brab Ki Pa Ro Tu Chen Pe Ning Bo Je Jawa Juk So The Bhagavati, the essence of the perfection of wisdom, or that which is called the Bhagavati, the essence of the perfection of wisdom, is herein contained, or lives here. And that's the title of the Heart Sutra.